The difference between Caesar's barber and a circus performer is that one is a shaving Roman while the other is a raving showman. Today I'm going to introduce you to a man that was a little bit of both. In this episode of Unusual as Usual, we're learning about the hairy tale of Lionel the Lionface Boy, aka Stephen Bibrowski. <laughs> Stephen Bibrowski was born in 1890 in Bielsk, near Warsaw, Poland. He was born with a rare medical condition called congenital terminal hypertrichosis, which caused his entire body to be covered in long, silky hair. Hypertrichosis is an extremely rare condition and there have been less than 100 documented cases of this condition worldwide. It's sometimes referred to as werewolf syndrome and may be, at least in part, responsible for the origins of the werewolf tales. In 1895, Bibrowski was discovered by a German showman called Herr Sedmeyer, and with the permission of Bibrowski's parents, Sedmeyer took him to Germany and exhibited him in his freak show. While there, Sedmeyer paid for Bibrowski's private education, amongst other things, and he grew up to be a very intelligent man who spoke multiple languages and had aspirations of being a dentist. Ironically, Bibrowski only had a couple of teeth in his mouth, which is common with many forms of hypertrichosis. Physically, he was not an imposing figure, as his official height was only 5 feet 3 inches. However, it did make him quick and nimble. By the time he was put on exhibit, Bibrowski's hair had grown 8 inches on his face and around 4 inches everywhere else. The thick hair covered every inch of his body, with the exceptions of the palms of his hands and soles of his feet. This gave him the appearance of a lion, which spawned his stage name Lionel the Lion Face Boy. Lionel being of Latin origin meaning young lion. Like many sideshow acts before him, his backstory was a fanciful tale. As the story goes, his mother, while heavily pregnant, witnessed his father being attacked and killed by an escaped circus lion. This frightful event his mother experienced caused him to be born with feline features playing into the wrongful belief at the time that the emotional experiences of a pregnant woman could have lasting physical effects on their unborn child. The story also attributed other feline qualities to him, such as sharp eyesight and night vision, which obviously were also not true. But whether the stories were true or false, it didn't stop people flocking in their thousands to see a real life wolfman in person. Armed with his new stage name and backstory, the two embarked on a tour around Europe. Lionel's reputation and his act were enhanced by his clear intelligence and obvious exposure to literature. The fact that he spoke five languages allowed him to communicate with his audience to show his gentle side in stark contrast to his appearance. He proved to be a very popular attraction, earning up to $500 a week the equivalent of $15,260 a week in 2020. As a replacement for the recently retired Jojo the Dogface Boy, he travelled to the United States to appear with the great Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. As this condition is so rare, photos of Lionel are often confused with those of Jojo, and for decades, images of the two were interchangeable as few realised the men were actually two completely different individuals. Over the next five years, he learned tumbling skills from the acrobats, practising his handstands and using his quick and nimble physique to perfect his backflips, enhancing his act. He was well spoken, well dressed and well groomed. On stage, he wore elaborate suits adorned with sequins and intricate designs and told stories of his travels. He stayed at the circus until 1907, when he returned to Berlin, where he was featured at the Passage Panopticon Wax Museum. In 1913, he moved to New York City, where he worked at the world-famous Coney Island Dreamland Circus, where he continued to perform for the next 15 years. 
while living in New York, a hotel he was staying at caught fire, leading to the third and fourth floors being engulfed in flames. Although it was a close shave, Lionel managed to escape without injury. In fact, he was one of the very first occupants out of the building. He was absolutely terrified of having his beloved fairy face singed and reportedly said, if that happened, I would just be an ordinary man. God made me this way. In 1928, he returned to Germany, his adopted country, to retire from show business. However, shortly after being granted citizenship in 1932, Lionel passed away in Berlin from a heart attack aged 41. He left no wife or children behind, but he did leave a legacy that has spanned generations. In 2006, Nicole Kidman and Robert Downey Jr. starred in a Hollywood film titled Fur, an imaginary portrait of Diane Erbus. As the title implies, the film is a largely fictionalized account of American photographer Diane Erbus's relationship with Lionel. However, no pictures by Erbus herself are featured in the film, as her estate refused approval. The film received great praise and the LA Times even said, Downey, for the most part, using only his soulful yearning eyes and silky voice, creates a man no one could resist. Separately and together, they make us believe the unbelievable. In 2012, Lionel the Lionface Boy was inducted into Coney Island's Sideshow Hall of Fame, 80 years after his passing. And there we have it, the hurry tale of Stephen Bibrowski, the Lionface Boy. But how about you? If you had all that hair, would you keep it or shave it off? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And remember, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. Or alternatively, this is the video that YouTube thinks you should be watching next. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.